Hi, my name is Kevin Sepulveda and I pastor the church in Caloundra. We are an independent, fundamental Baptist church located on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland in Australia. One of the key goals for our church is to eventually preach the gospel to every house on the Sunshine Coast, to give every family the opportunity to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ directly from the scriptures. Um, in order to do that, one of the ministries for our church, well, the main ministry we have outside of the church, every week we have um, a number of people going out, knocking doors of the community, you know, handing out gospel tracts and preaching the gospel door to door. Okay. Now, with any church, you're going to have in a situ- you're going to have a situation where you're going to have certain people that are really comfortable to give the gospel. They may have done it many times, and then you'll have others that are absolute beginners. They may n- they may have never given the gospel to anybody, and that's okay. You know, we all had to start somewhere. So the purpose for the for this video, and uh, I'm going to do I'm going to do a series of vi- series of videos, is for my church to be trained up for those of you that have never done it before, that you would have the tools. Available to, available to you and have the confidence and assurance that you're given a good, clear gospel presentation. But I'm also going to upload these videos uh, on the internet. So if there's anybody else that's watching this, maybe they can get some tips out of these videos and hopefully they can apply that to their situation. Um, but as you guys know that, you know, we've got a lot of gospel tracks at our church. Um, if you haven't got any at home, I would really encourage you to, to grab a bunch and always have them at hand um, should the situation ever come up. You see, gospel tracts are great for a beginner, um, for an emergency situation. So if God ever allows you to cross paths with someone who's seeking to know how to be saved, and maybe you still, you're still not comfortable to give the gospel on your own, you can always pull out the gospel tract, you know, read it directly to them. It's got Bible verses, it's got a great plan, um, and then it simply asks them the question whether they want to receive Jesus as their Savior or reject the gift of God, reject Jesus Christ as their Savior. So, you know, tracks are great. Tracks are great for a few reasons. Number one, the, the emergency situation if you're a beginner and you don't know how to give the gospel. Um, tracks are also great because when you um, knock on someone's door, they might take a tract off you. They can have a lot of information about how to be saved. But they themselves may not give you the time. You know, they may only give you a few seconds or a few minutes to give the gospel. <clears throat> so that, you know, we've attracted at least they can get the whole picture um, if you weren't able to get through the whole thing. And number three, it's also great as a refresher for someone that has heard the gospel in the past, um, may, not, may or may not have received Jesus Christ as, as their saviour, but for them to reread it and to be refreshed with all that information once again. So if they weren't saved the first time, they can at least, you know, the second time, be reminded and hopefully call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. So, you know, these are great, uh, but if you knocked on a stranger's door and all you did, did was pull out the tract and read it directly from the tract, that wouldn't be very impressive. You know, it would look like you're underprepared. Um, people want to see you, you know, be able to speak boldly and with confidence and naturally directly from the scriptures, directly from the word of God. So that's what I want to train you up um, to be able to do. And so I'm going to basically um, give you, you know, different verses that you can use to present the gospel. But before I do that, I just want to read a couple of verses to you. The first one comes from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. It reads, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, you know, the Word of God is the sword of the Spirit. It is powerful. It is alive. And that's what's, that's what's great about having the Word of God as a tool, is that you don't need to be, you know, the wisest man on the earth to give the gospel. You don't have to be an eloquent speaker. If you've got the words of God, you've got the power of God on your side, to be able to convince someone that they need to receive Jesus Christ as their savior. Another verse is from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It reads, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So where does someone get their faith? If they're going to put their faith and trust on Jesus, the Bible says it comes from hearing the word of God. 
So never get to a situation where you try to give the gospel without using the word of God. You know, it'll be impossible because the power is in the word of God. It doesn't come from you. <laughs> okay, you're just a tool that God can use to, to see many souls saved. Okay, now there are four books of the Bible that um, you're going to be, be using in this presentation. Okay, should you follow this presentation as I'm giving it to you? Four books of the Bible, let me give them to you. The four books are the book of Romans, the book of Revelation, the book of Acts, and the book of John. I'll just tell you again, Romans, Revelation, Acts, and John. Now, the reason why the book of John is so important, I'll just read to you John chapter 20, verse 31. The Bible reads, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. So the book of John is specifically written so that somebody would believe on Jesus Christ. Someone would believe on the Son of God. And so always make sure that your gospel presentation has the book of John in it, included in it. Okay. Now let's get started. The first reference, the first reference comes from Romans, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Romans 3, 23. Now, this first video, I'm not going to tell you how to give the gospel. I'm just going to give you the Bible verses that I want you to, to memorize. I actually want you to memorize these verses, okay? Most of these verses are really easy to memorize. There's probably just one that's a little challenging, and I'll show you which one that is later on. But you see, sometimes as you preach the gospel, people aren't going to give you the opportunity to pull out your Bible, and if someone doesn't give you that opportunity to pull out your Bible, if you've got the verses memorized, it's going to give you a huge advantage because you're still going to be able to give them the gospel just by speaking the word of God rather than reading it from the scriptures. Okay, so I'm going to give you the verses that you can use for this plan of salvation and to memorize, but also so that you can write down the references next to the previous reference. Okay, so let me explain this to you. The first reference, okay, always start with Romans 3.23. The Bible reads, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, next to Romans 3.23, in the margin, I would like you to write Romans 6.23, because that will be the next reference that you turn to. Now, if you don't want to write it in the Bible you read from at home or that you study from, um, I would really recommend that you get yourself a, a New Testament, you know, a, a Bible which contains just a New Testament, something small, something that you can fit into your pocket and use that to write in. Okay, so next to Romans 3.23, please write the reference of Romans 6.23. Now, if I turn to Romans 6.23, we're only going to be reading the first part of this verse, okay? I'll just read the first part to you, Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. Now, obviously, there's more to this verse. And we will read the rest of this verse at a later part in this gospel presentation. But you just want to read that first part right now. Now, the reference that you want to write down next to Romans 6.23 is uh, Revelation. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. The Bible reads, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Okay? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So those are three verses. You'll notice straight away they're quite short. And they're going to be really easy for you to memorize. Okay? Now, it's the next verse that's a little challenging. Um, <clears throat> so, next to Romans 20, 14, you want to write down the reference Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, verse 8. So, it's just across the page to the next chapter. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, the Bible reads. Now, the reason why this one's a little challenging to memorize is because it has a list of sins that makes you deserving of hell. I mean, every sin makes you deserving of hell. But Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 has a list of sins. And what I, what I personally found challenging was 
um, having that list in, in the right order, okay, that list of sins. So I'll just read it to you, Revelation 21 verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now you might be saying, boy, you know, these verses, they're pretty depressing. You know, it talks about being a sinner, talks about hell, the lake of fire. You know, these verses that I've given you, that's the bad news. We need to tell people about the bad news so we can then tell them about the good news. I mean, the gospel means glad tidings or good news. So we do, event, we do want to get to the gospel. We do want to get to the good news. But they will only understand the good news once they've understood the bad news. So next to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, the reference that we want to go to next, that you want to write down in that margin and go to next, is Romans chapter 5, Romans 5, verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible reads, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. One more time. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Okay, so in the margin, next to Romans 5, 8, you want to write down, Acts 16, Acts 16, verse 30 and 31. Acts 16, verse 30 and 31. And look, no gospel presentation should go without Acts 16, 30 and 31. It's the clearest uh, passage about salvation, how to be saved. Everybody I've ever read it to understood it perfectly. Um, please never go without this reference, okay? No matter how you develop your gospel presentation, always contain this reference. Acts 16, verse 30 and 31. Let me read them to you. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. I mean, that's, that's, that's straightforward. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just read it again, Acts 16, 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse, verse 31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Okay, now from there, you want to write in your margin the next reference. It's John 3, 16. John 3, 16, the most famous verse in the whole Bible. Um, it's, again, a great reference to turn to because a lot of people have already heard it. A lot of people are already familiar with it. So as you read it, they're going to be assured that it's coming straight from the Word of God. Okay, John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, please... If you're going to memorize just one verse, it ought to be John 3.16. It's, it's going to ha have multiple uses, and I'll explain that in future videos why it's such a good verse. Uh, but the best way that I learned um, to memorize John 3.16, I was a child and um, I was taught, of, you know the song, Holy Night, S Silent Night, Holy Night. Um, using that same tune, I learned how to memorize John 3.16 and I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll sing it to you. Now, I'm not a great singer, but um, I think it's such a great way to memorize John 3.16. So it goes like this. John, <coughs> there goes my voice. It goes like this. John 3.16, John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So <clears throat> that's a really easy way to memorize John 3.16. Now the next reference, you may or may not want to write this down in your Bible, 
Um, I guess as a beginner you want to, but it's only two verses down. It's John 3.18. <coughs> John 3.18, the Bible reads, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's John 3.18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Now at this point, you're really close to the end. We've only got two more references to turn to. So next to John 3.18, you're going to want to write Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. And yes, that's the reference that we read um, from earlier. The second uh, reference. Um, and it's the second part of Romans 6.23 that you'll be reading to the person. So remember Romans 6.23, the first part was, for the wages of sin is death. Okay, But the second part says this, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we're on to the last verse. So next to Romans 6.23, I mean, you've already made a reference to the book of uh, Revelation. So you might want to write this underneath that reference. We're going to turn to John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12. The last verse of this gospel presentation, John chapter 1, verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I'll read it again, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And that's it. If you're able to memorize all these verses, or at least have the references, start there. Memorize the references. Write them down in the Bible you're going to be using um, to preach the gospel with. And I promise you, once you've got this down pat, once you've nailed it down, you're going to have the confidence to give a very clear gospel presentation. You'll know what to cover, okay? Because the Word of God will be what leads you to what you're going to be discussing to that person at the door. Now, for example, um, obviously, the, the, the gospel is easy. You know, it's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, right? The Lord Jesus Christ came, died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose again from the dead. And it's a matter of putting your full faith and trust on Jesus Christ, his death, burial and resurrection, him alone, and that's your way to heaven. Now, as someone that's a Christian, as someone that's saved, a believer, that's very easy for you to understand, right? But you must understand that the person you speak to does not understand, you know, what's easy to you. Don't take it for granted. The person at the door will not understand these things. Most people you talk to at the door, if you ask them, what do you think it takes to get to heaven? They're going to tell you, be a good person. You know, keep the Ten Commandments, something like this. And they're going to think they've done, you know, pretty well that they think they're going to get to heaven because of their performance. So that's why it's so important for you to, sh you know, have to, sh to show them that they're a sinner, number one, that they're on their way to hell, they're deserving of hell because they've sinned against God, they've offended against God, they've broken God's laws. And it's when they realize that they are a sinner and they come short of God's glory that they understand that they need a saviour. All right. And again, people understand that Jesus Christ came and died on the cross. Many times I'll say to you, yeah, he died for my sins. He died for the sins of the whole world. But they don't understand how that applies to them personally. Right? They don't understand if, if, they're try if they think they're going to be good enough to get to heaven. They don't understand how that fits with Christ dying for their sins. So, yes, many people understand what Jesus did and that he was dead for three days and three nights and that he rose again from the dead. But you, you need to explain to them why he did that for them. And once you've explained to them why he died on the cross for their sins, then they'll understand why salvation is by placing all their faith and trust on Jesus Christ alone and not upon themselves and not upon their church or their false religion, 
they'll understand if you've given them a clear presentation of the gospel why they must put their faith on Jesus Christ alone. So again, please memorize these verses, at least write down these references in your Bible. Please memorize John 3.16. If that's the only verse you're going to memorize, make sure it's that one. And then uh, you're going to be ready to give a gospel presentation. In the next video, what I want to show you is with the verses that we've listed, how to give the gospel from start to finish. Thank you for your time.